And I was like, I really need some friends. So. Golden rule for students is social, sleep, and study. You can only <laughs> prioritize two. <laughs> Did you have any friends in Sydney before you arrived? Yes. Yes. My first friend at uni was Nirne. And I met him under very weird circumstances. We had a whole WhatsApp group going. And it basically had all the international students who were starting their uni in August of 2020. This one boy just messages me on WhatsApp. Say, hey, I'm Nirne here from India. I'm studying this. What are you studying? And we start talking back and forth. And he's now one of my best friends. Um, for me, I would say when I started, when I enrolled into UCED, I literally did not have any friends at all. <laughs> and I was super confused on where I could find people to interact with just because I was an international student as well, so I didn't know much. Um, and a lot of people told me, hey, you should check out Reddit. You said it has like a really good Reddit page. And I went on to Reddit. Now, what I didn't know that Reddit is kind of supposed to be anonymous. You're not supposed to put your name out there. <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, and I was like, I really need some friends. So I just made a Reddit post and I said, hey, um, I'm just joining you, Sid, and I put in a WhatsApp chat link and I was like, I'm going to make a group chat. Whoever wants to join, just come on in and let's have a chat. And I think we had almost like 90 to 100 people who joined. Um, and that's also how me and Isha interacted. Um, I texted her on WhatsApp like privately um, and then fast forward seven months I think she's my closest friend here mm -hmm. in Sydney so yeah it worked out pretty well. Have you joined any student societies? Uh, I was part of the hip hop societies which you know like when joining uni you always want to explore some of your hobbies or interests and meet some friends and I think that I made up my first group of friends here in Sydney we were doing all the dance competitions and it's, that's also the case I actually won the dance competition and the menu bar for the welcome to Sydney party all my friends were cheering for me and that's a very fun night and I met an all group of friends we all from the same student accommodation I actually don't know anyone when I first come to Sydney and that was a very welcoming environment when I first first join the University of Sydney and have a, such a good community here. Um, my experience is not as fun as yours. <laughs> um, I just joined a lot of societies during the welcome week when I came here like six months ago. So I joined, I joined the health society, um, which is what I'm studying. I joined the chocolate society, the dog society, mm -hmm. literally anything and everything. I did attend like one or two events in the semester but that's about it i think it just took me six months to just adjust to life here and i didn't really get the time to kind of socialize outside my pre-existing circle but i would definitely say it's an amazing opportunity to meet new people and especially meet people from different backgrounds because we're always so used to just hanging out with the same group of people um, but it was interesting to see, you know, such a diverse set of people. Yeah. There are so many societies focused on cultural aspects of your life, in professional and just fun societies. So I think I joined a mix of all three. So I joined Ikanch, which is like the pro predominant Indian society at UCED. And I joined the finance society, which is directly related to my major. I joined the investing society. And then like Ava, I joined the chocolate society and the dog <laughs> society, which were always a delight to be a part of. Do you have a good balance between study and social life? Is there a medium? I would say I think it's easy to find the balance when you've been here a while but when you just arrive at least for me I had so many things to figure out figure out where I'm gonna stay um, you know how like what my uni schedule is going to look like am i going to start working if i do what's my work schedule going to look like a lot of things to just juggle around um and it can be difficult to find that balance initially um, especially if you just 
I think for me because I came to Sydney in my second year so I didn't really have the first year you know the time that I would say first years have uh, I was just worried okay I'm gonna finish my degree soon I need to do this I need to do that but it's it can be difficult initially but I would definitely say the university has so many resources you can like like utilize so they have the peer support advisors they have academic advisors if you're worried about what your degree progression is looking like or you're not sure what units to take or what the next six months are going to look like in uni you can always just reach out to them and then you also have the student center that helps out with so many things even just small things um and when i landed in sydney um, since i didn't have any family here i wasn't sure you know where do people shop for groceries? <laughs> like that's such a random thing to be worried about. But um, you said was really great at the time uh, COVID was on and things weren't the best, but they had the International Student Center and you could always just go up to them and ask them for help or ask them to point you in the right direction. So yeah, I would say it's kind of difficult to find the right balance. But when you have people to guide you and support you, it can get easier. Yeah. As a student here at the university, we may all aware of the golden rule for students is social, sleep, and study. You can only <laughs> prioritize two. So when I was in my first <laughs> master's, I was actually prioritized the social and study part a lot and actually not have enough rest as I expected, yeah. but wasn't really recommending to anyone, you know, who are studying uni. And I think that was a very interesting experience. But uh, talking about the balance for social and studies and even have enough rest and also kind of your me time for yourself as well, I would really recommend everyone to choose maybe two or three club and society mm -hmm. to start with or social life or communities to be part of. I was very you know, passionate and excited to see everyone East Avenue. They are so passionate handing out all the flyers to join the club and societies. So I actually joined around 10 society in my very first <laughs> masters. <laughs> Try to test out, you know, what's the best offer from CNA. But yeah, it was a very fun, exciting semesters. But from the second semester, I get to transition a bit more and also prioritize, for example, the networking or the career mm -hmm. part and as well as the hobbies and interest part as well. And on the topic of well-being, um, I think there's a lot of um, support services from the university. Um, so don't feel uh, don't feel afraid if you want to talk to someone, if you feel overwhelmed, um, you can reach out to the CAP services and the university also launched a new initiative called InnerWell uh, here to support our students. And I think um, in terms of how do you find the balance between your different uh, priorities, it's really important to de um, develop the time management skills to you know, understand what's the urgency and um, mm -hmm. help you prioritize in different um, stage of degree. Something that a lot of students wanted to know, since being at UCID, has your English improved, you know, like conversational or the way that you write your assignments? I think in terms of just communication, joining clubs and societies and just actually going to lectures and talking to your professors and tutors and your peers helps a lot with developing how you communicate with people, sort of, it also affects your accent sometimes. And it also develops your vocabulary and you tend to start picking up on like the general slang. And in terms of writing the assignments, I think the more you write the assignments, the better your writing gets and the professors and tutors are always there to help you out. And there are also a lot of uni resources. I remember in my first year we had this unit in, in the very first semester actually, where it was solely focused on providing you support to write your academic essays. Because the uni academic essays are very different from what we're used to writing in high school. So it's a big shift. So I think, yeah, just support from the uni and just talking to people helps a lot. You can learn about um, using your communication skills in different contexts uh, through work experience as well. So you get a lot of training in terms of how to improve your academic writing as your formal degree at the university. Um, but it's also important to know, like, how do you communicate with a colleague um, in a different setting? Um, so I, that's why I think, you know, looking for those um, employment opportunities, uh, for example, um, casual employment or internship um, or programs like JobSmart are so important. So that help you get um, 
exposure to the workplace and that really helps improving many skills including communications in English. I was very resonate with the part talking about engaging in the community and also you know expose yourself in that English environment which mm. might not from your home language and I remember when I first came to Sydney I when I chat with people I have to uh, translate everything in my mind first and then start talking to people but once you get exposed to that environment I was living in student accommodation and we have people coming from everywhere around the world so you have to speak English to kind of communicate and have everyone be part of that conversation so that really really encouraged me to uh, like try out and also speak as much as I can also improve the language skills and also communication skill as well also I think another tip could be never afraid to reach out I remember in my very first semester my first essay was a thousand four hundred words and due in one week and that was a big <laughs> shock for me because the biggest essay I've ever written was in an ALTS test so that was only 300 words <laughs> and then coming from no uh, in international school only coming from a traditional education background that was a very big challenge for me and my friend at the time and we were sitting in the same course it really helped me how to roll out the structure where you need to include what how you're going to write the essays or what are the tips for academic writings so they have been really helping me and we meet each other in a business school mentoring group and I think there are a lot of initiatives at the beginning of the university life you can meet a lot of friends who are in the same study stage with you and you guys can work together and help mentoring and also mutual studies Hi, I'm Isha. I'm from India. I'm currently studying a Bachelor's of Commerce and I'm majoring in Banking and Finance. I'm in my third year of uni and I've been in Sydney for about seven months now. My name is Benny. I'm from Shanghai, China. I'm currently studying Master of International Management, CMS. I've been around Sydney for more than five years now. I also did my Bachelor here too. I'm Ava. Um, I'm studying a Bachelor of Health and Infectious Diseases. I'm from New Delhi, India, and I've been in Sydney for just seven months now, and I'm in my third year. My name is Dennis. Um, I was an international student here at Sydney as well. Um, I am an alumni and a staff member of the business school. 